All right, did a tiny little bit more work while the recording was being saved. The active flag, uh, the, I had it before that it was checked was true, like always true. What I do is I, I'm looking at the data binder eval method and looking at the data item active flag value. So what this does is it evaluates what the active flag is and re, and sets that to the checked value because um, this is a checkbox, so the the values is going to be displayed in the in the checked uh, attribute. For address line one, I have two things going on here. So let's let me make this a little bit bigger so we can read it. So I have uh, it's a template column, and the template column the way it works is depending on what perspective if you're in select mode or edit mode it's going to it's going to render two different ways so in the select mode it's going to let, uh, render render like a label in the edit mode it's going to render like a rad text box pretty cool so the address line two and three this is where it pays to cut and paste because it's literally the same thing uh, for two and for three so what I'm going to do here is do a find on one and wherever one is I'm going to replace to two just in this little block. Address line two, address line two, this one's going to be three. I'll go back to those unique names, I don't like that either. I'll probably put it back to the to the data names. Some of this auto-generated stuff. So two and three straighten out. Uh, city. City's going to be like uh, address. As a matter of fact, state's going to be like address too. So city. Or state's going to be like address except for that it's going to be a drop down. We talked about that. Unique name. Now I'm going to call that city. LBL city. RTXT city. This is city. This is city. And header text is going to be city. Excuse me. we go. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to pause and do the rest of this so I don't hold you hostage. I'll have all the rest of these fields done. Hold on one sec. I'm back. Again, this was just, I, I paused it just because I didn't want to hold you hostage. So here we are. Um, I've got my columns. And I think we're all ready to go. Let's say, um, let me do one thing though. Darn it! I've got I got caps lock on my uh, on my find. So anyway, unique. Address ID, unique name. Unique name. I'm gonna call it that. Unique name. You know, this is probably why it didn't match up the last time, but whatever. This had to be done anyway. State, state, okay, the rest of them I got. Let me uh, let me start this. I'll restart the, the project. So right now, there's no edit button on the grid. There's just um, the fields for address. So this should just be a dumb grid. As a matter of fact, you're not seeing any of the rad grid stuff or rad text box stuff yet. Active, address line one, blank and blank. I can put data out there to show you what these look like, but city, state, zip, and zip four. Very cool. So, so far, so good. Let's go back over to here, and what I'm going to do is go back into the, the rad grid and, and add uh, an edit column. So go back into edit columns. I'm going to go to one of these things. Is edit Yeah, edit command column. Let's move this to the front. And let's see what we got. Just the plain old edit column. I didn't do anything. Uh, I didn't give it any heading name or header name. Let's say if I said header heading tech header text. There we go. All right, let's call it action. How about that? Okay. Now what should happen is I should have an edit button out here. 
active, still got the rest of the stuff. Now when I click edit, it'll throw the grid in edit mode. Now I have it so there's there's a different a couple different options for this. I can make them so it's in line. In other words, when I edit, it just opens up this one line in line, or it does this where it just opens up sort of like this. The update or the cancel. Now you notice I didn't give you any store procedures for update or for insert. I just give you the select. So this will do nothing. If you click update, it'll it'll return back to the to, to the select state, but it's not wired to anything yet, and I'm not going to yet. Uh, so for right now, when I go to edit, you notice that they show up as text boxes. Remember the rad text box instead of labels? Very, very cool. But this state, I don't want it to show as a label because they can type in XX. That's not a state. I want it to be, I want to force them to give me a real value. I've got those real values in the state dropdown. Or, I'm sorry, in the state um, D, uh, BLL. So let's do this. Let's go back over to the grid. And in state, of, instead of showing in the edit template a rad text box, I'm going to give them a dropdown. Drop down list, not that one. I want to use the Telerik drop down list. Awesome. And the tag. And you know what? The stuff is pretty much the same. I'm going to call it ID equals RDD state. I'm going to call it run at server. And data's value field equals, that's going to be equal to. The value of the 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 excuse me the value field is going to be the field that I want to store, the value of whatever is selected. Um, let me show you what I'm talking about. There's two fields you get to deal with: the value and the and the text field. So what I want to do is show this, but hold that. State abbreviation is going to be my my value field. Data text field is going to be state name. Data source ID, I'm going to do my own. Uh, you'll see when I when I go to the, the back end here. So rad drop down is going to be rad state, I'm sorry, the, the state is going to be a drop down called rad state uh, RDD state. It's coming from the server. That's my data field. That's my data text name. Data text field, excuse me. So this needs a data source. Can I use all needs data source? Apparently not. Okay, so let's say. Okay, so what I got to do is when this grid is in edit mode, I've got to stop it in edit mode and bind that. Uh, and, and, and excuse me, execute the store procedure. It's going to fill this out. Give me one second when I think about how to do that. So if I go back here to my back end, let's close the UC address. Move this over here. Protected void is going to be load state. Now it gets a little bit tricky with the BLLs because I can't name two things the same thing. Okay, so far so good. And I'm going to call this RDD dot RDD. Now uh, here's uh, here's a tricky one. Okay. Normally, your IntelliSense work it should be RDD.state, and it should show up. Well, guess what? That control is inside of a control. You can't do it quite like that. I can't reference this control directly. What I have to do is find the control within that control. I'll tell you what. Um, instead of holding you hostage while I poke around for it, let me find it, and I'll give you the code. It's like five lines of code. I just want to make sure I give you the right stuff. I'll pause and be right back. Sorry about the pause. I'm back. So what I had to do was... Hmm, in the state, again, in the item template, I have a label called LBL, LBL state. In the edit template, I've got a, a drop down called RDD state. I have run at server, and I have the drop down height set at 100px. Um, and I'll explain what the drop down height means. Now, when is this state called? In other words, when is it filled out with the state? If I go to sample address, when the grid is bound, when the grid is bound, I've got to check to see if am I in edit um, excuse me, am I in edit mode? And is that item editable? 
So as it's painting the grid, it goes row by row and says, is this item in browse or is it an edit as and is it editable? Hello. If both of those are true, I've got to run this code. What this code says is first find that drop down. Find the drop down RDD state in this control and cast it as a as a rad drop down list. Impl impl excuse me, implicitly cast it as a rad drop down list. Then I set the data source as my list states method. I set the data field and the text field again, the value field and the text field, and I do the data bind uh, event. And what that will do will it will bind my data. Let's take a peek at what we got. Again, compiling. It's going to show my addresses. I've got one, two, three, easy way, blah, blah, blah. I click edit. And instead of a text box for state, I have a drop down. Now, you do notice something. That was state of PA, and when the drop down list shown or was, was shown, it selected Alaska, which isn't the state that was set. If that makes any sense. Uh, it really should have picked PA. In other words, the item selected should have been set as PA. Um, I'll fix that. Let me cancel this. Close my program. Okay, so what I do have to do is I basically have to do that data bind stuff, this uh, data binder to the container. This one says data bind to the container and call it st, um, I'm sorry, look for the data item st.state. Okay, so I think if I said in here, uh, let's see, rdd state dot selected value, excuse me, selected item equals, I type it right, item equals e dot, let's see, what do I have available to me, e dot, not item, I want to say e dot data item, but it's not e dot data item. Let me find out what it is. Again, I'll pause. I'll be right back. It's just a one line command. One sec. Back, I added a couple of lines of code. First of all, I cast I, something goofy you have to do. I casted the e item, e dot item, into edt dot item. Excuse me, edt item. And let me make this little change here. And you notice down here I'm saying the selected value now is data binder dot eval. Edit item dot data item st to string. So this should set the value of that drop down to whatever state it was when it's first displayed. So PA should be PA or Pennsylvania. So it's going to look for the, well, let's see what happens. It should look for PA and set it to Pennsylvania. It might not be selected value, it may be selected, well, you'll see. Hey, look at that. Okay, Pennsylvania. Very cool. This one here should be Delaware. Okay. You know what? As a bonus, I'll I'll give you the I'll write the code and give you another episode <laughs> how to do the update. Uh you know what we have to do? We have to create an update store procedure, update DAL, update uh B A B L L and then call that update in the item command uh, store procedure and the update will f send these values over alright you know what, what I, I take that back before I do that let's tidy up the the UI there's nothing I can do about address line 1 2 and 3 other than making it like the max character city is really nothing I can do state I gave you the drop down zip and zip 4 let's consider we're going to keep this in US um, that could be a mass text box. In other words, I don't want them to be able to type in characters. Let's limit it to um, numbers. And I'll show you how to do that in the next episode. And probably the one after that, I'll give you the update. Excellent. Thank you very much. Bye.